Um, first, thank you, Noshe, for inviting me here. It's quite a pleasure to be here today. And what I want to talk to, to you, be, maybe it's a bit slightly different than enterprise social media. It's more about professional social media. And I think Chris will certainly talk a lot about enterprise. I want to focus more to, towards the aspect of professional, uh, professional social networks. This is what we're doing at LinkedIn. And uh, whenever, you know, I, I start talking about professional social networks, or social networks on LinkedIn, people have in mind, you know, the large numbers, the millions of members and, and the social phenomenon that uh, we're seeing around the world. But uh, while those numbers matter, essentially, this is not what's the core of how we think about professional social networks at LinkedIn. And what I would like to do in the next couple of minutes is just give you a sense about how we think about professional social networks. And based on that thinking, uh, what is the type of answers and infrastructure that we have tried to develop, or at least we know we're, we're attempting to, and show you some very simple examples uh, uh, of that infrastructure and implementations. But uh, my first question uh, uh, that I would ask is, how many of you are on LinkedIn? If you can raise your hands. Well, that's a pretty good number. Uh, for those of you who are not, no pressure, you can sign tonight. Um, but for <laughs> those of you who are, who have discovered their in-map? Very few. So for those of you who haven't, let me introduce the in-map. In-map essentially is what you're seeing in the back. This is a visual representation of someone's professional networks. And on that map, this is mine. This is, uh, I did that just uh, yesterday. So this is uh, a micro and professional networks. And every dot on that graph, essentially, it's somebody that I know, somebody that I have a professional relationship with, somebody which is part of my professional spheres. And if you look at my professional network, it's not kind of a big blob. It, it, there's a structure into it. Uh, of course, the oversized represented blue graph there has to do with the LinkedIn people. It's people which are gravitating, gravitating around LinkedIn, people which are my former colleague, my current colleague, or people which are just around the LinkedIn arena. And you can see that uh, since I've been moving all over the place over the years, different uh, clusters there. But the point is that only me knows about that. There's not an algorithm behind that essentially built my professional networks. What we have here essentially is a clustering algorithm that look into my first degree network and the relationship between them and try to make sense of them. And the point is that everybody has such a professional network. That you're starting your career or you're 20 years down the road, everybody has a professional network and it matters. And so what I'm going to do with you is just go now through a set of random members on LinkedIn uh, uh, to show you their social networks and think about that as a personal experience. And while you're seeing uh, these different structures that you're going to see, think about yourself and your own a professional network, because this is the point I want to make about the way we approach at LinkedIn professional social network. So for example, look at this num uh, member. Not too many connections, but on one side you see that he has a set of uh, connections which are forming a clique, and a lot of other connections that are totally unrelated. Somebody else here that has a structure a bit like mine, but you can see that there is three big blobs and some isolated people in the middle which are essentially bridges between different type of connections. And when you look at these clusters, they can be your current employment, past employment, or sometimes also clusters around interests that you have or skills. Uh, for this member, essentially, maybe somebody which is in the early days of his career, and essentially it could be a classmates uh, type of a cluster. Here's somebody that has a network uh, diversity which is extremely strong, so somebody which is controlling his network. And you can see that uh, uh, this person has uh, uh, cliques which are highly connected between, uh, within themselves, but not uh, between themselves. Somebody else, the opposite, lots of connections. And maybe somebody that through his career has navigated within a few, a few companies which are highly related and you can see lots of connections. You see the clusters, but the clusters are interrelated. Another one. And the point I want to make here again is you're seeing essentially that everybody has a very different experience, but everybody has a professional network and that professional network does matter. And that's what I, the message is. From LinkedIn, we look from the individual out. We don't look from the, the huge network. It starts with the individuals, and we go out. And from that, we build a large network. And this is really the, the, the vision that we have, which is to be user-centric. And in professional uh, uh, social networks, it's not about the enterprise. It's not about the company. It's about the, the, the individual and building from that. And so. Uh, that is actually driven the whole way we think about how we want to build a platform to support professional social networks. And uh, we, we can summarize that in, in a very simple way, which is through our missions, which is essentially uh, to connect the world's professionals and to make them more productive and successful. So how do we do that? There's two sides of this equation here. First, you have to connect the world's professionals. So that's where the big numbers come from. So yes, LinkedIn, it's uh, today around 160 million members. Uh, all self-registered, there's nobody which are, are join, you know, automatically, so it's self-registered members. Uh, we're going very fast abroad the world, so actually the majority of the members now are outside of the United States, 
uh, acquiring a, a, around two to three members per second. Uh, also, lots of companies are represented on LinkedIn because they want to reach to professionals, so we have two million companies represented there. Uh, and also a lot of people coming to the site. As you can see, uh, as of last week, we are the 25th most visited website in the world. That's the aspect of how we connect professionals. And if you think from a social network perspective, is you start where you are, and you hop to your first degree network. And from this first degree network, you hop to the second degree network, the people that your network knows, and you hop to the third degree network. And you realize very rapidly that actually you can reach pretty much everybody within the network, within one or two or three hopes. That's the power of the network. On the other hand, what we want to do is to make them more productive and successful. So how do we do that? Well, there's a lot of value propositions on LinkedIn, and we try to organize them around three themes. And I want to talk today just rapidly uh, uh, around two, which are the, the, the concept of identity and insights. The concept of everywhere means you, we don't want to create another silo where you have to go. So you don't have to go only on the websites of LinkedIn, but essentially we want to be there where the workers are. That means that we want to be on all the platforms. We want also to provide APIs and plugins. But with respect to identity, you know, it's, there's a, 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 very often it's kind of a, a overlooked the fact that uh, right now you have the ability to essentially control your identity on the web. And uh, when you, you have your profile on LinkedIn, essentially you control it. And you can also uh, uh, display who you are in, in novel ways and thoughtful ways. It's not just about a digital uh, uh, resume. You can also uh, put content there. You can also uh, establish your reputations through uh, uh, recommendations from other people, but also through uh, uh, feedback of users on your own contributions on the sites. Um, also, when you're on LinkedIn, you, you can gather a lot about yourself uh, by looking at the connections, your connections. And if I look at the profile of somebody and I look at the common uh, connections that we have, we can infer a lot about someone. And, and the, the, the big aspect also here is not only you have now this ability to, to, co to control your identity on the web, but you can also be found. And the one thing which is very important is how can we uh, 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 make your message being known to everybody? So the one aspect on LinkedIn also which we're trying to do is to essentially make sure that your message is being heard. And so the one thing we do is uh, if you Google, for example, you Google my name on Bing or on Google, the first result that you're going to get is your profile on LinkedIn. And that's really the important aspect. Uh, I did that yesterday, for example, and you can see on both sides. Same on LinkedIn, when people are looking for a profile or looking for people or for people with skills, uh, we use the notion of connection strength. One of the things I was mentioning before about the power of the, of the network, when I was saying that yeah, you can hop and hop and hop and hop, actually you can hop optimally. We have a notion of connection strength. So we look at who you are, the people you're interacting with, the content that you are consuming and contributing, and you get a sense about the strength of the connections between any two pairs. That means that within this network of 160 million people, essentially, we're getting a sense of what is the strongest path between those two people so that we can optimize the chance of the connections between those two people and establish a relationship. Same with our search. When people look for, 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 for uh, uh, relevant profiles, we will make sure that the, the, the connection strength is being optimized. With respect to insights, that's essentially where you are going to help others and others are going to help you. And so when you come on LinkedIn, you know, when you look at your homepage, uh, you don't necessarily think about it, but essentially it's your insights page. This is where essentially you're going to get value out of the network and the network is going to get value out of it. So once you have established essentially your connections, now information is start to flow to you. And uh, you have essentially updates that you're getting from your network. All information that you need to know. Simple things, for example, if you remember uh, be before, I would say before LinkedIn, um, if somebody in your network is changing jobs, it can, get, it can go sometimes months or six months before you even know that the person changed jobs. Nowadays, you know it right away. And by the way, you can cultivate this relationship. You can just send a, a congrats note. There's an aspect of cultivating the relationships in ways that you could not do in the past. In the same time, now through these updates, you're getting information from them, which is unique, pieces of information which is really filtered down to you. Uh, you can also so interact with your network as I was describing. And at the same time, now also the network is giving back to you because everything that you're contributing can be now also uh, directed to others. And so your network and the larger network of people which are uh, like-minded, uh, communities which are like-minded like you, we can take all of this content which is being created, filter it, and essentially redistribute it to it. So on this page, essentially, you can see that there's tons of information. There's so much information that at some point, uh, you need to start optimizing these information. And that's where recommendations come into play. And so uh, uh, even in the, the information coming from your uh, network, uh, it's like the, the news on the very top. On the very top, essentially, you're getting news 
filtered news from your network, from your industry, from people which are like you, and so you get really relevant information. On the other hand, there's uh, uh, information around companies and groups you should join and jobs and people should connect. All of this information comes through essentially recommendations. So let me talk about recommendations a little bit, because recommendations really leverage the power of the network. That's essentially my I think, in where I'm developing these tools. But the idea is what we want is to provide the right information at the right time for you when you come there and leverage the, your network. So the one thing is all the information that you find is personalized. What does that mean? We look at you, at your profile, who you are, at the semantic. We look at your network, the social, the social graphs. Those social graphs include your first degree network, the communities that you belong to, the company you worked at or you worked at in the past. Uh, we look also at your behavior, and all of this data together is being put in order to find recommendations which is truly personalized. And there's also this notion of uh, how can we leverage the, 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 the network uh, uh, when we want to recommend piece of content? Well, it's very simple. Every piece of content essentially is an attractor where people interact with it. So we have this notion of virtual profiling. Virtual profiling essentially said, okay, uh, I want to know if this piece of information is interesting to you. So I can look at the piece itself, I look at the semantic and say, yes, I see that you have an interest in that, you have a skills there. But more importantly, essentially, you have people which are interacting with that piece of content. And what I can do, essentially, I can create a virtual profile by looking at everybody which is interacting with that piece. I can now look silently at the features that matter, which are overrepresented in those profiles, and build exactly uh, some kind of a, you know, a human profiles of that piece of content and I can start matching that against you. So that piece will come to you as really a DNA relationship with you, and it's coming from the network. Uh, other piece also we use, uh, as you know, that the, 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 the uh, people's uh, on network, uh, there's two types of behaviors. There's essentially from social learning theory, you have followers and leaders. Followers are people that knows what they want, uh, uh, no, leaders, and followers essentially are people which are following a norm. And so you can leverage a network for really uh, uh, addressing that problem, especially uh, uh, with the social learning theory, you can, you can leverage a network and say to somebody, hey, this is somebody, something which is very popular in your network, oh, uh, or the entire site uh, uh, has been looking at that piece of information. And it's quite interesting because when we put recommendations on the site, we really put very often those two types of information side by side. Information which is coming for, for the leaders, essentially it's all about the content, you know what you want, let's you show you this type of recommendations versus recommendations coming from the network. And what we have observed over time is there's no interaction between these two types of recommendations. The followers don't see the recommendations addressed to the, to the leaders and vice versa. The recommendations coming from the wisdom of the crowd, for example, leaders don't see it because they don't care about that. They know what they want and they want to drill down what they know. Um, also, the one thing which is very important is the value of a network is also about what you're creating on the network. So uh, all of our recommendations, everything, piece of information, so what we're trying to do at the same time is optimize also the return. That means that if you are consuming, we would love you to then contribute. So for example, we are recommending communities that you should join just to participate to the professional dialogues, group you may like. Well, actually the metric that we're optimizing is not just group join. The, the metric is the following is, we want you first to find groups that you're interested in, but we maximize the likelihood that once you have joined the group, you are going to be a contributor. How do you go about that? There's multiple ways. And actually, once again, social learning theory can help you to devise very simple ways on how to make you participate. The other aspect also is to do warm recommendations. So when you get recommendations, the big problem very often is they come to you in a way which is kind of, a, oh, the system is telling you something and you don't know where it's coming from. If you can now use your network and turn your network into champions, that's a very different ball game. So essentially, if you now get the recommendations to join a group that is coming from somebody that you know, you have a much different engagement. And so the problem right now is to find the right time when you can bug somebody to take a few minutes to send a recommendations to somebody in this network. So there's a lot of aspect of how you optimize that particular moment. Finally, also there's the problem about, uh, since there's too much information, so mm -hmm. overflow, how do you optimize the time at which you send the right recommendations? People coming on LinkedIn or professionals, as you remember at the very beginning, are very diverse. And they come on the site for multiple use. So there's a sense about understanding again from the network, what is your intent when you come on LinkedIn? You're coming right now, you're logging in. What is your intent? What is your need? Are you right now coming because you want to create your, your network? Are you coming because you want to consume content? Or are you coming because you want to create content? 
through the network, we can actually learn those different needs and anticipate them, model them, so that actually the type of recommendation which is coming to you will come in the right way. If you are a job seeker, for example, right now, uh, and we can understand that you are a job seeker, we're going to change the home page entirely and that the content is going to change and focus on, on job seeking uh, information. But if you're not a job seeker, why put job, uh, job information? If you're a content uh, a consumer or you want to connect, we will try to tailor uh, and personalize the page. The other thing also important is because you are, uh, there's information can, can, can flow through the network in so different uh, uh, ways, there's a problem also to understand the flow. So when you come on LinkedIn and you go and you, 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 you consume and create content, when do we put the recommendations? If you put the recommendations too early, you don't get engagement. If you put too late, the same. You have to find the right time. And if you find the right time, you will find that people engage 10 times more. So am I already at my 10 minutes? So, so, so actually, I think I can stop there. But the thing is, uh, what matters very much uh, with that is by leverage, leveraging the networks to really find the right relevant piece uh, uh, of content, what you get is this type of return, essentially, where essentially today most of the actions happening on the professional networks come from the recommendations in terms of group join, connections, uh, company follows, and so on. Thank you. <laughs>